Welcome to this new episode of my Godot introduction series. In uh, the last tutorial we have created an advanced uh, movement, we have added a jump behavior, um, a left-right movement, the camera and um, yeah, we have a working character so this is pretty nice. We have exported some properties to the player node here so we can customize them here and in this episode we will start creating a state machine I will explain how to set it up and what it is what it is for we will create a left-right rotation for the character so if you move to the left he will face to the left, if you move to the right he will face to the right and we will create a double jump behavior so let's um, jump into it so um, why do we need a state machine? or what is a state machine? well currently we have uh, our code in the fixed process function running and if we start adding functionality this function will get bigger and bigger we will create new if uh, state statements and um, <coughs> this can get pretty messy especially if you want to debug your code or you get some errors and you don't know where to look for and uh, this can get very messy well when we create state machine a state machine we will set up um, certain states so for example we will have a state for the ground and a state for the air and this uh, and only if we are on the ground only the code for the ground state will run so the other uh, code will sleep for the time and this will making debugging much much easier and um, make the code and the overall structure much more organized and that will okay we will just start with that for that we will create three variables one is player state previous one will be player state uh, the current one and one will be the <coughs> player state next so why these three functions um, with these functions we can check if we just entered a state so if the previous state is differs from the current state we know we just entered a, a new state and we can run code only once and that's why we have these th three functions and um, to store that functions as we need them we will go into the fixed process function and create or say player state previous is equals player state so we will store the current player state in the previous and after we have stored that we will set the player state to the next one so this state will always be one tick behind that one and that's exactly what we need um, and if you want to change the state we will just use this variable and set this one and this variable will, will then set our player state so now we will check for the states so if we have player state equals ground we will only run the ground uh, state function and we will give delta to that function so elif, so if this function is not active we check the next ones so player state equals air then we will run the air function or the air state so okay so this code here won't run in the fixed process anymore we will create a new function which we call function ground state equals delta so and <coughs> we can turn it on so and if we press now left or right you see nothing happens well this is because we haven't set the next state so this is important for states you always um, need to define how to get into one state and how to get to the next state and that we will do here we will say okay the initial state will be ground and we will run the function and he falls down we can move it now if he jump he still is in the ground but we want him to move into the air state so this will be the exit um, uh, state so if he's on ground we can jump um, but otherwise if that ray that we see here is not colliding with the ground <coughs> it will set us to the next state so 
else, so if it does not collide, we will say player state next equals air. And now we will set up the air state. <coughs> Funk air state delta. Okay, we will just copy um, this stuff here and put it in here. So, um, what I want to change in the air state is, for example, I want him to. Um, I want the acceleration of my movement be to to be much m much slower and the deceleration. So we will copy this and say air acceleration and set it to let's say two. Now we will change this here. Air acceleration and if he does hit the ground, the next state, as you can may guess, will be ground. Now let's see if it works. Okay, he falls down. We can move him. We can jump. But you see, uh, we can still move him. And let's see uh, what the prince says. Um, <coughs> print player state. And let's decrease this to 1 so we see it better. And this to 7. So air, ground, okay, works. We jump up, we are in the air, now we are on the, gro on the ground. Awesome. So, now we want him to... Um, to decelerate a little bit uh, slower, and therefore we will set this one to 1 and see what happens. So, he jumps and it's much harder to stop him in the air and this can be a gameplay element and that's what we want okay now the cool thing is we have um, our two states um, and we know where to debug so if we know there's a problem and it happens in the air state we exactly know we have to debug this code we don't need to ch touch this one just go through this code um, but you ha you may have uh, code redundant, and um, this is where you can um, create new functions and put only the function in there. But um, this is maybe a downside of states. You may have um, code more redundant, but I think it's uh, it's okay with that. So now, once we have created our states, we will create the left-right motion or uh, rotation. Sorry, and <coughs> Therefore, we will create a new uh, node, and this will be a very basic node to D, and we will call this rotate. Now, to indicate the character's rotation, we will just duplicate the sprite and scale it down, and just move it a little bit so we know he's facing to the right. Now those uh, two nodes we will reparent to our rotate node. So we have him here now in this rotate node. Okay, and if we want to rotate our character now, we will just set the scale value of the x um, of x for 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 this node. So if he's running to the right, it will be plus x. If he's running to the left, it, it will be minus x. And that's how we will rotate him. Okay. Therefore, we will also create a variable which is called orientation, um, also previous orientation and orientation. Okay, <coughs> ah, next, sorry. Um, now we will do the same here as for our player states. We will store the orientation or set the orientation previous, and afterwards we will set the orientation to orientation next. So the same as here, the orientation previous will always be one tick behind this one, and that's what we want. So we want 
to see when he just rotates and not uh, only in that one in that one tick where we set the other rotation. Okay, now that we have the orientation, we can create a new function and call it, for example, func rotate. Let's call it rotate behavior. And here we will um, now get that node. Okay, how to get this node? <coughs> we saw that there is a function in node which is called get node, and then we just have to type in that path, and that is what we want to do. We will create a new variable for that, or yeah, and this is the var rotate node, or rotate just equals null and now we will set it in the ready function because you can't use this uh, functions you or you can use them just in ready or um, in fixed process and that's why we will set it here so rotate is equals get node and now we are going from from that uh, node why because the script is there there and rotate will be the next. So just type in rotate. Okay, now we have the rotate node. So <coughs> now we will ask um, the or we will check the orientation uh, variables. So if orientation equals right and orientation next equals left then rotate them so um, we will say rotation dot set scale now we will get the current scale and multiply it with minus one so get scale multiplied with the vector or yeah minus one on x and one on on the y-axis, so this won't um, influence the y-scale. Okay, elif <coughs> orientation equals left and orientation next equals right. We will copy this one here and rotate him again. So, or we can put it in one and do it just that way. If this happens or this happens rotate our character. So he, he will get the current rotation and multiply it with minus one. So if he's left he will rotate to the right, if he's right he will rotate to the left. Uh, to the left. So and now we just have to run that rotate behavior somewhere and we will put it here at the top rotate behavior and put it yeah here and the same goes here and now we just have to say <coughs> if the button is uh, right orientation next equals right oh sorry this is left and if the button is right, he will rotate to the right. So same now in the air state. <coughs> Left and right. Okay, now let's see if everything works. Um, identify rotation is not found. Okay, let's check it. We have Ah, it's called rotate, not rotation, sorry. So this is the rotate node. Uh, now let's remove it here. Um, so this is rotate. And the code, okay, where else? Here. Okay. So he's running to the right, works, now we run to the left and it doesn't work. 
Okay, now let's see what the print says of the or if the orientation does work. Orientation print. Okay, let's see. Oh, what have I done? Oh, sorry, okay. <laughs> Here it has to be right, of course. Now let's see, he's running to the right, he's running to the left. Okay, this does work here at the bottom. Now let's see if we go get into that function. Print rotate. Now let's remove um, that print here. Okay, we don't get into that rotate behavior is running. Okay, let's do it differently. <coughs> Elif is running. Okay, it's running. Okay. I will just pause the video for a second and figure out what the problem is. And I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, my problem was I uh, used my ro rotate behavior at the beginning, but afterwards I set my orientation states. So this was wrong. I just needed to move the rotate behavior function behind um, the setting or the left right um, setting and then it does work. So now in this case the rotate behavior is running after I've set my uh, orientation next uh, variable and if you play the game, you see that if you run to the left, he will move. If you run to the right, he will also move. So this works. Or rotate. Awesome. Now we have um, different behaviors on the ground and on the air. So on the air, the his acceleration is much much slower and um, he also is stopping much slower and that's what we want. Okay, and finally we are going to add a double jump behavior. Okay. Therefore, we will create a new function, which is, which is called jumping. And if we are jumping, we will set it to 1. So jumping equals 1. And if we are in the air now, and jumping is 1, we may jump again. So if btn jump equals 1 and jumping equals 1 we may jump again and increase the jumping variable by 1 so what's the problem? oh ok here's an indentation which we don't want so let's see if it works. Uh, btn jump dot check. Okay. So we jump once. We jump a second time, but the third time is not possible. So this can be a gameplay element too for many games that you have a double jump that you can gain, and this can be a nice gameplay element. And yeah. Okay, I think we are done with this tutorial. Um, I hope you learned something and um, I hope you liked the video and if you do so, please subscribe to my channel for the next videos and also please share this video with other people so all new Godot users can have access to these videos and learn something from it. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Goodbye.